Hi, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you some of our Ask Nerd uh, questions in the form of a screencast. Uh, the first one we're going to do today is uh, based on an email I got, or somebody actually filled out the Ask Nerd forum. I got an email with the submission. Uh, and Myra writes in and says, Hi, first off, I want to say your videos have been very helpful to me. I started a job and was new to QuickBooks and had very little training, so I've been using your site as my Bible. Thank you. Well, let me respond to that statement by saying that flattery will get you everywhere with me. Hence the free screencast specifically addressing your question, which is as follows. Okay, my question. I work for an appraisal company. One appraisal we did was for, I'll leave it blank, and instead of charging the full amount, they paid $1,500 and the remaining thirteen hundred, the full amount was twenty eight hundred, the remaining thirteen hundred was donated. We gave them a deal on which we received a tax receipt for. My issue is I entered the invoice and okay, we're gonna show you how this how I would do this in QuickBooks if I were keeping the books for this company. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're talking about the situation where we've donated services. It's not normally what we do necessarily uh, donating services but we have a situation where we've got an appraisal business that does appraisals and now we're donating some of our services to somebody and we want to figure out how to book that in QuickBooks so let's see how that looks first of all we need to make sure that we have the account in the chart of accounts to handle the charitable contributions so I can press control N for a new account while I'm in the chart of accounts and we're gonna put it in other account types we're gonna call it an other expense and the reason is because we're not in the normal business of, of doing charitable services charitable contributions are, are not an ordinary thing it's not an ordinary part of what we do it's an extra thing it's it's extraordinary so we're gonna call it an other expense and we're gonna continue to call it charitable contributions so we, now we have the account. Now we have the home to put those expenses in, or for that matter, those reductions in our income when we choose to donate our services. Now the way I would do this is not the way that was described in the email that I read to you. There's, first of all, there's no reason to enter a bill. And the, the key to remember on any of this kind of stuff, especially when we're dealing with maybe a more complex bookkeeping transaction and how to post it, is to think in terms of what really happens at the bank. And we want to make sure that the books reflect that, that the books are just a mirror image of what went on in real life, so to speak. So so what I want to do is if I only received $1,500 from the customer, then that's all I ever want to reflect in the bank account. I don't want to reflect that $1,300, and it should never touch my bank rec because I never got $1,300. I never paid out $1,300. So really what that tells me is where I want to deal with that $1,300 is outside of the banking structure, which leaves really only at one other place, which is going to be on the invoice. So if we're dealing with something that's on the invoice, then we're dealing with items. So let's create an item over here. We'll go to new. We'll do call it a service item. We'll call it donated services. And over here, the account is going to be my charitable contributions account. And then I'll show you how this works. We're going to post an invoice to my sample customer. And the first thing we're going to do, I'm just tabbing through my fields here to get to it, is we're going to bill them for our appraisal services. Let's blow this up. And we're going to bill them $2,800 for the full amount of the appraisal services. We want to recognize all of the income so that we show the appraisal services at $2,800. Now, if you watch my basic bookkeeping class, then what I'm about to explain is going to be very easy to understand. If you haven't, go watch my basic bookkeeping class because even if you're an expert bookkeeper, um, frankly a lot of expert bookkeepers these days don't have the background in debits and credits. They've learned how to use QuickBooks. They may have even learned pretty well how to post transactions, but you don't have the background in understanding debits and credits and frankly that is the background that's going to help you figure out how to book a transaction like this because now you can start thinking in terms of where do I want it to go on the balance sheet and profit and loss statement and that's why I've got these statements up here for you. And I'm showing you these for all of time. This is a brand new clean company file that I set up just for the purposes of this exercise. And as always, I make the exercise files available for these uh, webcasts in my Knowledge Center. You can download them. Usually I put them up there for like two or five bucks or something. But uh, getting back to this, I want to think in terms of how is this going to look on my chart of accounts? Well, I, I want to recognize the whole $2,800 in income and I want to recognize the $1,300 in cost of goods sold so that my transaction ultimately on the 
the P&L should net out to the 1500 and actually the invoice at the end of the day should only reflect the 1500 as a balance because that's what I'm going to receive from my customer. So going back to the invoice, what I want to do is I want to bill this 2800 and here's where the debits and credits really come in handy because now I'm thinking, okay, I've got an invoice here. I'm booking it for $2,800, which means I'm crediting income for $2,800 and I'm debiting accounts receivable for $2,800. Well, now I want to donate some of those services. So I'm going to put a line item in here that says donated services and now I'm going to say negative $1,300. Well, what does that do? If the $2,800 is normally a credit, and it's a credit to whatever account this item is associated with, right? Appraisal is associated with an income account. So therefore, 2800 as a positive number on an invoice is a credit to that income account. And we happen to have called it, just so you can see everything, appraisal services. So the appraisal item is linked to appraisal services and income account. $2,800 credit to income. Donated services, as we saw because I set it up in front of you, is linked to an expense account and other expense called charitable contributions. Now since it's negative, it's no longer a credit, it's a debit. And that's exactly what we want. We want a debit to my expense account. Donated services, debits increase expenses. So what I'm doing is I'm debiting 1300 and effectively I'm reducing my credit to accounts receivable from 2800 to only 1500 because that's the total of my invoice down here now. So that's how I accomplish this and then what you can see when you and it's very helpful to look at this to look at what happens to my profit and loss and balance sheet after I post a transaction like this. So let me reduce this screen for a minute so I can hit save and close and you can immediately see the impact on the profit and loss in the balance sheet. There's my $2,800 of income. There's my charitable contributions of $1,300. So I've got net other income of negative $1,300 because that's the only thing in my other section. Net income is $1,500. Over here on the balance sheet, I've got the accounts receivable that resulted from that invoice of $1,500, which is exactly what I said. And in the equity section of the balance sheet, we get the net income flowing over there. So it's nice to sometimes have a clean QuickBooks file to post just one transaction and see how it impacts the financial statements. It really helps you to understand what's going on because ultimately, whatever you're doing bookkeeping wise, the ultimate purpose of it is to populate these reports in a way that makes sense and in a way that really describes the financial transactions of our company in the most accurate possible way. And this is how you do it. So, again, the $1,300 never touches the banking structure. In fact, the only thing that's going to touch the banking is the net amount due on the invoice of $1,500. Let's go get that payment from our customer. We're going to receive the payments from our sample customer 1500 save and close it goes into now that it goes out of accounts receivable and into undeposited funds let's make the deposits I've got my payment I check it off okay 1500 save and close now it moves from undeposited funds to the bank account so I'm just moving that $1500 around on the balance sheet when I receive the payment and then when I deposit it and now we're done now we've got everything exactly where we need it to be the $1500 is in the bank we've recognized the whole 2800 of income and I've got my charitable contributions properly recorded at $1300 as an other expense now let's go to reconcile so I'm gonna reconcile let's say that was the only transaction in the first month of business was that one invoice that we got paid for. So the the beginning balance was zero, the ending balance is fifteen hundred. There's my deposit fifteen hundred. Notice I'm reconciled. I click reconcile now. And you can print the reports. I don't print the reports because I can save them as PDFs, especially since I've got the accountant's edition. But that, my friends, is how you're going to handle donated services. Now, you may be wondering, what about donated inventory? If I sell inventory and I donate some of that? I've already got a webcast on that. If you go to Nerd's blog, nerdenterprises.com forward slash blog, then you can do a search for donated inventory, and you'll see that there. This is donated services. And I'm also going to put up a full-length tutorial in my Knowledge Center that goes in detail step by step how to set all this up for the situation both where we have donated services and donated inventory so look for that coming soon in my learning center email me set that nerd enterprises.com or go to the ask nerd form on our blog nerd enterprises.com forward slash blog fill that out send in your question I can't necessarily get to them all but I'm gonna get to as many of them as possible and if I choose yours I'll email you and let you know when it's up in nerds blog I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this. I look forward to seeing you on the web. Don't forget to call 866-945-8070 for private one-on-one -on -one training on this or any other topic that you see me cover 
in Nerds Blog. Again, that's 866-945-8070. I can send you a link to log in with you. You can share your screen with me, and I can coach you through the very specific application of what you need to know, exactly how you need to know it in order to do it in your own QuickBooks file or on any other software program that you see me cover that you'd like to learn about. So again, give us a call, 866-945-8070. And once again, I look forward to seeing you.